I would like to talk to you about making a symmetrical design using a square of black paper. This is four inches by four inches, and this is a nine by 12 piece of paper. You can see really lightly I've drew, drawn an X right in the center, and really lightly you can see the outsides of the square. Maybe you can't see them very well, but that's where that can go. I want to make sure I draw lightly so I can erase those lines when I've finished. In order to make a symmetrical design, I basically want the two sides to be the same or a mirror image of each other. And the easiest way to do this is to fold the paper in half. So I'm going to basically make sure I line the corners up really carefully here. Okay. So that we'll have the same basically the same shapes. And then we flip them and we get a nice reverse. So that's going to fit right in there. Okay. Or if I wanted to go up and down, you could turn it horizontally if you wanted to like that. I could do that as well. Either way. So now I need to basically draw out my design on this and a pencil graphite will work just fine. Um, you might find that you tend to draw basically rounder shapes, or you might draw more square shapes. Whatever your tendency is, that either one is fine, whatever you're most comfortable with, but basically just try to, you know, move your pencil around and come up with a design that, that makes sense for you, something that is abstract, but um, I tend to use curves. Curves are all a little bit more difficult to uh, cut, I will admit. So, you know, you might want to think about using straight lines if that's easier for you. So, I'm creating a kind of curve in there and um, basically, let's see what else I can come up with. It's just, you know, sort of spontaneous. Maybe come right across like that. You don't want to make it too complicated but just something that will give you enough interesting shapes that you can work with. Okay. If you don't, you know, you might want to go over it to make sure it's a little bit simpler or that the curves or the shapes that you have are doing what you want them to do. Um, I could basically I feel like it needs something else and I'm not sure what that is. Maybe this can actually curve around more like this. Or maybe I'll take that in just a little bit closer. And um, create another curve doing this to give it a little variation on the variety. I thought that was a little bit too simple otherwise. Now I'm liking that a little bit better. Okay, so I'm going to basically turn, bring this, and I'm going to put a little inner piece right here that I can cut out. Almost a, almost a triangle, but not quite. Sometimes a little piece like that inside can offer something interesting that you can work with. And I can also, with that corner there, that might give me something as well. Okay, so pretty simple. Now, when I cut it out, I want to be able to cut through both pieces. So the advice I have for you, and I recommend using an X-Acto knife. If you're not used to using an X-Acto knife, um, it's, it's good to practice. Um, it, a mat like this is really valuable to use. Uh, you don't want to really cut it on a surface like this. You don't want to use cardboard. You want to keep your mat knife, um, exacto knife, nice and sharp. Um, if it's sharp, you don't have to press very hard to go through both layers. You should not have to press hard. So the best thing you can do is change the blade. You know, it doesn't take long for a blade to get dull. And if you're going to try something like this, just change your blade and start with a fresh one. It will make it, your life so much easier. So I'm basically loosening the back here. I'm going to pull that out. Now, to dispose of the blade, 
If you have a set like this, you can basically take your used blades and slip them right inside there. Okay. If you don't have this to dispose of your blade, it's a good idea for safety reasons. Take some tape or some paper and crumbled paper or something like that and basically you, you don't want anyone reaching in the trash can and cutting themselves on this. So I'm going to wrap this around so you have a nice little bundle and they have to really and then you can throw it out without hurting anybody. So discard that and then basically take a new one and pull that out. So always want to come out very easily. There we go. So we got three. Three. We only want one. Okay. Great. They come a little bit glued together, which is great. Keeps keeps them in sh good shape. But they should come apart e more easily than this. So I have an older blade that I haven't wrapped up. So I'm going to try to use that to separate them a little bit. There we go. All right. That's the new one. And then this one is, uh, I'll put these back in here and set them aside. Okay, so I want to, you can also see on an old blade if a tip is just falling off just a little bit, um, a little bit flat. And that comes from just going straight down on the paper rather than um, and from this angle it's like if I hit the paper this way rather than this way cutting so you want to make sure that you drag it at an angle so you're not breaking off the tip because that's going to dull your blade really quickly so so I stick that in there and then I'm going to use the back to twist they're all a little different but basically twist that up nice and tight and then, since this is folded, I'm going to leave, put this right here so I can just lay them aside there. So basically, starting with this one, I'm going to basically start at the side, and I'm just going to slightly go right up to the top. Okay, very simple. That's the shape I have right here. I'm going to go ahead. It's just half of the shape, so I'm going to go ahead and just to, if you've got a lot of little pieces, this will help you keep track of them. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut this one and I'm turning it. There's a natural way that you can pull your mark when you draw, when you cut. There's a natural way you can pull your mark. You know, kind of pulling down sort of away towards me and I'm rotating the paper to match rather than rotating myself to match the way I'm cutting. It's much easier to move this around. So I'm going to start with this and turn a little bit. Turn the paper, cut a little bit, turn the paper. I really I want to go through both if I can. If I don't, I can always go back and cut a little bit more on the on the bottom piece if it doesn't go all the way through. So let's take a look at that and see if it's coming through, right? This has got a little hang tail. This is not quite going through. Some places it is. So, you know, I want to go back and if this comes apart or if I can just lightly cut that, that's going to work. And then I can see if this, you know, needs a little bit more coaxing. So, it, and if you have thick construction paper, you might have to go back and cut again. So follow the line that you just put as closely as you can. Turn it. Try to keep it as even as you can. And as I said, a straight line, you know, even with hard corners, they're going to be easier to do than this. So, all right, there we go. Okay. So it looks kind of like a, a ram's horns or something like that. And I'm going to fold it, and it's going to go right here. So I got my pieces sort of all together that, that way. Gosh. 
All right, so now I've got this all filled in, all the pieces, and I can start to see how to lay this out. Okay, now I've got all my pieces cut out, and I've got them put back together in the, in the square. I've got them all cut down the middle. So this gives me a chance to really see what possibilities I can get with this design. Um, probably the easiest thing to do is to leave one going down the middle like this. I'm going to go with the bottom one and leave that there. And then I'm going to take this one here. It's going to get a little jumbled as I do it. And I'm going to flip it out. So it fits here. I'm going to flip it this way. And if this sits in the square just like that, this straight line lines up right there. And I could even touch. Because this right here is a mirror image, that white piece. So you're going to get this really interesting reversals. This can touch as well. You get that interesting negative space there too. And so you're getting a kind of interesting display, but then this other side will be a mirror image. And so that even adds more interest to it. So that starts to give me an idea about what this design wants to be. Now there's some other things I can do to make it you know, even more interesting. There are some places where I noticed I had like this little, this is drawn here as an edge that I could cut out. So if I took this, put them back together, I can take basically and just and cut that edge just like that. Okay, so these two, this one would go here, and this came from here, but if I flip it, it can go here instead, so that it's basically finishing out that curve. So you get a black on one side and white on the other. Same thing here, this will flip over. And I can take this piece right here. And the same thing, it's got a slight curve to it. And it's going to sit right here. Again. The lines are there to kind of help you guide where that should go. So, Okay, now I want to talk to you about gluing this down. So I have this laid out the way I want it to look. With another piece of paper, I'm going to glue it on. These lines are drawn on here very lightly. So I have the outside of the square I can see for reference. This is a palette. Now, there's different ways I can use it. I could use a magazine or something, even just like really sturdy paper. But I'm going to glue this, put the glue out here. And I'm even going to take a cheap brush and just spread it out a little bit. I don't want it to be too heavy. So I'm going to glue each piece individually. So what I can do, I'm going to start here in the middle. So I have a reference line here and here. And if I just lay it down there, I know I can get some glue on there. It's, it's very gentle PVA glue. So then um, basically lift it up, try not to get glue on the front. If you can help it, it will dry clear, but it's not going to be the same flat finish that it has. So if you can't, uh, so you'll try to avoid getting it on the front. So now I'm going to lay this down. I don't want to move it around too much, but I, there is a flat section on the top. And there's also this line there. So I want to make sure I line it up with that and basically Leave that negative space as it goes, just like that. Now, the other one, 
I'm going to take this one next. This will go inside there. And I could, if I want to, there's not a lot of room to do this, but I could, you know, very gently brush some glue on there too. It's another way to do it. I just don't want to slop it over to the side of it. I want to keep it just on the back. And I want to glue the whole surface if I can, which is hard because I am, you know, basically there. That'll do it. <clears throat> and now, so I'm going to take my picture pencil to help me pick this up. I'm going to flip this around. And again, opposite land of this one, right on that line, I'm going to basically press it, put that down. There we go. Okay, so I can just if I want to just do a nice little press across. I don't leave it there because I don't want the white to glue to it, and that gives me a, a pretty nice um, symmetrical reversal design. Now that we have this glue drown, it's had the evening to dry out. So there's no wet glue and it's not going to slide around. I can go ahead and erase the lines, the pencil lines that I left for reference and just clean it up a little bit. Now the safest way to erase the pencil lines is to use a kneaded eraser. So this is, or a kneadable eraser. And you can soften it up by stretching it a little bit. And if I want to pull away from the edge, so I'm not going this way on the edge, I'm going away from the edge. That will lighten the edge up a bit. But if it's not strong enough, which sometimes it's not, it depends on how hard your pencil is or if you pressed hard, you might need to actually use a stick eraser or some kind of plastic eraser, which this is, it's actually plastic, but it's just a small one. So it helps me target the area I want. <clears throat> 